Welcome back, everyone. Let's talk black excellence. Two Atlanta teens are making headlines after making history through a special program with Harvard. And that's because they're the first black female duo to win Harvard's debate competition. And it's all because of Harvard's Debate Council's diversity project that trains and recruits highly motivated students. Imani Stanton and Jayla Jackson are now household names, and they're joining me both from Atlanta. Thanks to both of you. Great to see you. Um, I want to make sure we know that which is which. So, um, Jayla, you have the ponytail, right? Yes. All right, great. So we know which is which. And Imani, um, you are joining us, both of you there uh, from uh, Atlanta. I can see you kind of moving around. So if you stay real still, we can see you because I want to make sure everybody can see your pretty face. So congratulations to both of you. First of all, um, how does it feel? Um, who wants to go first? I can go first. Well, it feels amazing for Imani and I to do something that represents something that's way bigger than just ourselves to do something that is setting a precedent for something that's going to be revolutionary. I'm just glad that I could be a part of the movement. I'm glad that I could do my part and just feeling connected to my people, to people who look like me, people who go through the same things as me. It just means so much. And for me, it doesn't, yeah. And for me, it doesn't just feel like a win for myself. I feel like I'm, I, I've, we've made a catalyst or performed a catalyst for the larger community. I, I know that there was a glass, there was a glass ceiling and we broke it. So the next black girl duo can come right on in behind us because we left the door wide open and we're creating a space and cultivating the space for scholarship to meet culture and black people and scholarship to be one. So for me, it feels like I'm representing something that's so much larger than myself. And that feeling is just indescribable. That is exciting to hear. Do you feel as as black teenagers that there is pressure there? Because number one, you know, it, sometimes it's not cool to be really smart, you know, and everybody's trying to be trendy and hip and cool. Um, how does it feel knowing that you are excelling in this area of, of academics and education uh, and, and not an, enough black kids maybe are getting that sort of uh, that motivation and there's probably more pressure uh, to do other things? Yes, I think that's a great point. And one of the things that the Harvard Diversity Project strives to do is to change the narrative. That's something that you will hear us say a lot. There is this idea that if you're smart, that if you're an um, academic, you're not considered cool, you're not considered a hip. But another motto of the program is that scholarship meets culture, that there's a space for both to coexist. Me and Imani, Imani and I did something that's academically astounding, and we did it in our culture. We did it as very much black girls and proud of our skin and of our heritage. And so there is a space for the two to meet. And I think that this is, as I said before, you know, changing the narrative, setting a precedent for that there is a space for them both to excel in each other. Right, and um, the concept of it's not cool to be smart. I'm, we're still kids. I'm, we're still teenagers. I still go home and binge watch a whole TV season of Netflix. I still go out to a, a pool party and have fun with my friends and go to the movies. Just because it's, it, it, the concept of not being cool to be smart, it's smart is just it's just so narrow minded. And we aim to and we aim to change that narrative by saying by me freely telling you, yes, I still have free time. I still binge watch movies, but I'm also an academic. Being an academic does not change your culture. It doesn't have to change who you are fundamentally. And the two can coexist. I love hearing that because both of you are so gorgeous and so smart. Um, and I want you to tell me about your topic uh, because your topic is something probably a lot of adults don't need, even know about. Okay, so I'll take this one. Our topic, the resolution was that NATO should significantly increase the defense commitments to the Baltic states. And the Baltic states are three states that used to be a part of Russia. So we argued on the negative, our winning case was that the uh, NATO should not give troops to the Baltic states because we're tr there's a trend that where troops are sexual violence increases because they engage in prostitution and therefore the demand for sexual violence goes up. And then our other um, contention, which is basically a second argument, is that um, NATO needs to help the Baltics move onto a clean energy system for two reasons: one, to uh, combat climate change, and two, to um, get under the Russian, get out from under the Russian thumb of being on the Russian power grid. Mm -hmm. Wow, well, that's very impressive, that topic. Jayla, I'm going to ask you, why do you think you guys won with that? What was it about the two of you that was so uh, mesmerizing? 
I think there's two parts to answer that question. Number one, our setup. So we had to create a night case and a pro case. And essentially what that means is that one where you are for the resolution and one where you are against it. We use the same concepts, both on our AF and our NAG. And what that allowed us to do is we were prepared. We knew what the potential problems in our AF would be and the poten potential problems in our NAG would be because we literally took the two and flipped them against each other. So that allowed us to be prepared for any refutation that would come along. And then the second part of that is just our team dynamic. For Imani and I, we are polar opposites. I am extremely artsy, extremely creative. I'm a poet. So I'm typically always in the abstract realm. Imani is a STEM student. She's very calculated. And so the ability for us to come up with unique arguments and then make them real time, you know, come up with the preparation needed, the cross ex questions, the blocks for rebuttal, all of the things needed to make sure that our argument did amazing is really what played a role in it. So that team dynamic allowed our arguments and our cases to excel. Yeah, you do sound like a, a dynamic duo. I want to ask both of you what your future holds for you. Imani, I'll start with you. Now that you have this under your belt, what do you want to do next? Well, I'm a senior, so my next step is applying to colleges. I obviously want to go to the, the best of the best, so that's the Howards, the Harvards, the Stanfords. But what I really want to do is I'm going to major in bioengineering, and I want to create the space that was created for us. The Harvard Diversity Project created a space where we could miss college scholarship and culture and not have to get rid of our culture in order to be an academic. It's so frustrating that that space does not exist in other fields. This space that Harvard Diversity Project is for debate. I want to expand a space where other black girls can come together and other black students can come together in other academic space that I go into. So whatever college I, I, I end up at, I will be creating a community like, uh, like that community that was created for me. Wow, and similar that's to wonderful. Imani. And Jayla, how about you? Similar to Imani, I think we could both agree that this year we've been poured into extremely, you know, heavily by our families, by our instructors. And so now it's time for our year of service. And so I'm a junior, meaning that I have a little bit more time to explore college and what that looks like for me in the future. But currently I plan to stay active. I recently released my first poetry album. It's called Pages Like Knives, available on Spotify, Apple Music and YouTube. I own a, um, I'm a co-founder of a podcast called The Scholar Social, where we do and practice the skills that we learn through the Harvard program because we were all Harvard scholars. And so basically just finding ways to produce content, hold events, you know, assist, engage in community service where it's bettering the community. Um, I think that Imani and I can both agree that this is way bigger than debate and that we are representing something that goes years and before us and will be going on years after us. And so just representing something larger and contributing to that constantly is the most important thing. You two young ladies can do whatever you want. You're both so smart and talented. It's so impressive what you've done. And we can't wait to hear what's next for both of you. I'm sure we're going to be hearing your names once again in the news doing big things. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you. Thank you so much.